Hi everyone, my name is Tim Yaris and I just want to say thank you for joining me for this session that is an introduction to a new product that we have here um, called Project Explorer for Civil 3D. So we've had this a bit kind of a work in progress for quite a while and i um, really excited to finally have it getting in people's hands with the 2021.1 uh, release time frame of Civil 3D. So I'm just going to walk you through kind of what Project Explorer is all about what it is, what it does, um, who has access to it, how you can get it, and then um, I'm gonna just only give you a couple slides here and then I'm gonna actually spend most of my time just giving a demo of the product itself. So first off, just a couple of slides just to kind of, just because it seems like I have to because it's just what you do. Um, quick couple minutes about me. Um, again, my name's Tim. I'm here with the Autodesk team. I've been based in the Manchester, New Hampshire office here at Autodesk for quite a long time now, since 2006. And so the whole time I've been with Autodesk, I've been on the Civil 3D product team in a number of different roles, um, including writing the help and tutorials for Civil 3D, did a bunch of the user experience design for Civil 3D for quite a few years. And then now as the product manager, I'm kind of owning the roadmap and the general enhancements for both Civil 3D as well as now Project Explorer for Civil 3D. So um, more on that coming right up. So first thing I want to touch on really quickly is just kind of a little bit about Project Explorer for Civil 3D. So what is it um, and what it does? So first thing is just the main thing that we're trying to focus on here and get people excited about is that it's a whole new environment for interacting with all the data that's within your Civil 3D model. So if you think about a lot of people think about Project Explorer as kind of a, um, almost like a prospector, but more of like a like really souped up, very powerful version of Prospect that gives you a lot more functionality than just the uh, the typical Civil 3D prospector it does. So what you'll see here, this is kind of a quick screenshot of what it looks like, and I'll get into more of what it does in a couple minutes here. But basically it's just this window that sits on top of Civil 3D. We more than likely expect customers to be using this on a separate monitor. So Civil 3D Canvas running on one monitor and then Project Explorer is kind of living up on a second monitor where you'll be able to kind of just keep interacting with all that data while still having access to your drawing space. Um, it's a really great environment for doing things about just kind of figuring out, exploring the model and how things are put together, um, examining all your objects within the drawing, being able to compare and validate those objects both to one another and also validating them for things like design violations and those sorts of things, um, editing some of those objects as well as extracting a lot of the metadata out of those objects so you can use them in custom tables and reports and those sorts of things. And that's some of the stuff that I'm going to get into in a couple minutes here. Um, otherwise, it's a very clever, really batched bunch of tools that um, we've had a lot of customer requests from over the years. Um, Productivity tools run things like I said, custom reporting, custom AutoCAD tables for your objects, as well as just a whole bunch of other little um, little productivity tools, things like being able to swap multiple gravity network, gravity pipe network parts, um, being able to set slope across pipe network parts and stuff like that. So a bunch of really good tools that I think you're gonna really find some heavy use of. Um, how do you access Project Explorer? So a lot of conversation from people on the forums and also just um, just customers reaching out to us just wanting to know how they get access to this tool. So again, once we released Civil 3D 2021.1, um, we released Project Explorer at the same time. It's not included in Civil 3D 2021.1, but it is included for um, in the accounts for customers who have a subscription to the AEC collection, as well as to EBA customers. So customers with an enterprise business agreement. Um, you'll see here, this is just um, on, like just jumping ahead to this next thing here. So you'll be able to find it on, if you have access to it, you'll be able to find it both on accounts.autodesk.com in your account, as well as at the, in the Autodesk desktop app, if, you, if your organization uses that. So the screenshot over here on the on the right here is just showing that um, from within the AEC collection, you'll see that it's um, listed right in line with Civil 3D. So it's not buried within Civil 3D itself. It's it'll show up like as a peer to Civil 3D. 
Um, one quick thing to notice here is that your sh the version here is showing is 2021. Um, the same version for 2021 is also compatible with Civil 3D 2020. So um, the single installer will work on both Civil 3D 2021 as well as Civil 3D 2020. So good news there. Um, so not onto the good stuff, just a handful of things that I'm gonna walk through in my demo here. Just gonna give you a quick overview of what the user interface for Project Explorer looks like, how you can interact with it and customize it how you can use it to find and interact with a bunch of these Civil 3D objects and which objects are and are not supported, um, how to edit some of those objects and some of the caveats with some of those, as well as um, focus a bit on how to generate reports and tables, both in custom formats. And then hopefully I'll be able to kind of give you a little bit of a sneak peek as to what's coming next for Project Explorer, because this is something that we definitely have plans on building out as um, time goes on to just make it more powerful to everybody. So with that, I'm just gonna skip over, I'm gonna get out of PowerPoint now and get right into um, Civil 3D and Project Explorer. So here we go. Okay, so here we are in Civil 3D. So how to get to Project Explorer is probably the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, um, clearly. So a couple different ways you can do that. Of course, command line is always your friend. There is a Project Explorer command. Uh, Project Explorer right there. So of course you can, just like any other Civil 3D command, you can launch it that way. Or um, from up on the ribbon, currently for the 21 and 2020 releases, um, you'll be able to launch Project Explorer from the add-ins tab. And so it has its own panel and its own button up here and everything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna launch it. And then I'm gonna do spend some time just kind of walking you through what the user interface looks like and kind of how things are laid out and then once I give you the quick quick rundown of it, then it'll be very apparent how everything's laid out and how you can use it. Um, so basically, so this is Project Explorer. And so you'll see a couple different things I'm gonna walk through. So the first thing is a series of tabs along the top. And so this is, again, very similar to the way that Prospector is laid out where each object has its own tab in this case, instead of like a collection. Um, so you'll see here, here's alignments, and assemblies and so on and so forth. Um, this tool was originally built just using the publicly available Civil 3D API. So where there were gaps with certain Civil 3D um, object types um, with the API, um, those gaps exist currently in Project Explorer. Um, we're working very hard right now on the API to open up a lot more Civil 3D objects in the API so that um, with the goal of both helping you all develop your custom tools for those objects, as well as ex being able to expose those objects in um, Project Explorer, as well as Dynamo and other tools as well. So um, more coming on that front. So anyway, so you'll see, again, here's your tab for all your different object types. You'll see like a preview panel here, and I'll get into that in a minute, but then you'll see a couple different um, tables here down toward the bottom. So this is your object table at the top here, and then there's a subject, subject, sub object table beneath that. So the way that that works is, let's say like, for example, you'll see here, um, if I dig into my prospector, my alignment collection, and hey, look at this. Uh, this is a modeless dialog box. So that means you can keep this open and keep it running like on your own separate screen and you can still dig into Civil 3D itself. So you don't have to cancel out of Project Explorer in order to interact with the, um, the data within your model. So really good news there. Um, and of course, Prospector's good, but you can also do things like just, if I wanna pan and zoom around in my drawing, I can do that too. So um, really, really good thing there. So you can do a lot of editing in here and still be able to just kind of bounce back and forth editing graphically as well as editing um, the data within Project Explorer. So you see here, a whole bunch of alignments in this particular drawing um, of a little subdivision here. And what I'm gonna do is there's also all the, all the alignments and their, um, their dependent profiles are all listed here as well. So if, for example, I wanted to um, pick one of these alignments and profiles for that matter. Let's say I pick the apple seed. Well, that's, that's not a great one. Let's take a look at this one. Okay, apple core road, or no, let's, let's not even do that one. Let's go to, I had some notes here, apple street. Let's take a look at apple street. 
So here's Apple Street, the alignment, and I have a whole bunch of different um, things on my sub object panel that showed up here. So you'll see things like there are different tabs for different types of information, calculated stations, the entities that make up that, um, that particular alignment, um, PIs, if there were super calculated along this alignment, then it would show you the critical stations for the super elevation as well. Um, let's say for example, like this, you see when I pick different things in here, you'll see that different things light up in this little preview. A whole bunch of different things you can do in the preview. You can kind of pick and choose which types of um, display components you want to show in here, um, just using these buttons up here at the top and kind of it's, it's progressive. So what you select depends on what you're going to be able to see in this particular um, view up here. So right now it's an alignment and so it's showing profile information. So let's see if I pick one of the profiles that are associated with that alignment. Then you'll see like this is the FG. So now it's a nice smooth FG profile that's showing up here and I can do things like if I wanted to only see, if I didn't want to see um, like my EG surface profile, I can turn that off and that goes away or it was supposed to anyway. Um, anyway, you get the idea. And there's a bunch of different things you could sh show up here as far as like if I didn't want to see that shading, I could turn that off or the ticks and all kinds of good stuff. Um, so playing around with it is a really good thing and it'll give you kind of an idea of what it does. Um, again, so in the progressive disclosure kind of thing, so depending on what you're picking here is what's going to kind of depend on what shows up down the line. So in this case, if I go back up to my alignment, you'll see I get those alignment related tabs. If I pick like, for example, my profile, I'll see tabs in my sub object table that are related to my profile. Um, you'll see in here that there are some parameters that are black and some that are purple. Um, black text items are not editable. Um, again, that's just limitation of the API for the time being. But anything that's purple is something that you can update. So if I wanted to, for example, change my FG profile surface description to just um, finish grade profile as my description, I would just say, okay. And then now, of course, it's going to um, update that. And it also, of course, updates that same description in the object in Civil 3D. So everything that's um, Project Explorer, anything that you do in Project Explorer relates directly to what uh, the data in the model itself. Um, cool things you can do here. Uh, let's see. Oh, actually, before I get into the cool things I can do later, um, black text we covered, purple text we covered. Red text is um, just lets you know that there's some sort of violation there. So in this case, um, if I hover over it, it'll give you, again, more information. Just lets me know in this case, this alignment doesn't have any entities to it. Um, other warnings that you'll see here is if there is a design criteria violation or anything similar to that. Um, if, it, if a pipe violates the rules that you have in place, then it'll show up in red as well. And then if, um, if it's something that's editable, you'll be able to make correction to that and um, apply it to your object. So really good stuff there. Okay, a couple of the other things you can do here that are very clever are like, let's say for example, I have my alignment selected, but again, I have a whole bunch of alignments in here. And how do I know which one's Apple Street? If I'm not familiar with this particular drawing, this particular model, how do I know which one's Apple Street or versus which one's CR6 or whatever? Um, nice thing you can do in Project Explorer when you have something selected, if I hit my control key, you'll see over here that my alignment lights up. Pretty slick. Um, other things you can do, and that's, that's a tool that you'll be able to use pretty much throughout Project Explorer. So if, for example, I wanted to, if I have like all my entities in here or my alignment points of intersection that I wanted to see, if I wanted to know like, okay, where which of these curves is this particular one right here? Um, you'll see that again in profile, it's showing, it kind of changes depending on which um, entity I have selected. So this is showing this horizontal curve in my profile where it goes. But then if I pick that and I, if I hold down my control key, you'll be able to see there, that's the curve that I have selected. So again, just nice clever way to just give you a little bit more feedback on how this particular drawing is put together. Um, 
you can do, there's a whole, as you see here, there's a lot of information that you have in here to, um, to work with. Pretty much every property that you have um, available in Civil 3D with these objects to work with, you have available in Project Explorer. Um, if you want to be able to limit what sort of information is in there, um, there's this layout button down here at the bottom. And again, it shows up very similar, another interface that's very similar to the way that the main Project Explorer window is set up. So your um, object tabs across the top and then um, object and sub-object tables at the bottom here. Um, this whole interface lets you basically sort out what types of objects or what sort of data you want to show up in the Project Explorer window. If I wanted to turn off um, a whole bunch of stuff related to points of intersection, I can just turn all those properties off, apply it, I can, and those properties won't show up anymore. Um, again, labels, stuff like that, point ge profile geometry labels, all that kind of stuff. Um, I can, I have total control over what I, how I want that displayed, if I want it displayed at all in the Project Explorer window. And again, anything that's purple, you can edit. So if I wanted, um, if I were in, let's say I'm in the UK and I didn't want PI station, I wanted it to be PI chainage. I can change that to chainage and all will be well. Um, progressive display of how you want different things to be, different items of information to be laid out. You have a whole bunch of control in here. And again, you can save one of these layout styles. Um, if, for example, you wanted to, as a CAD manager, um, specify what type of data you wanted all of your users in your organization to have the same um, data laid out in Project Explorer, you could save that layout and then share it out with the rest of your um, organization as well. So very, very handy thing there. Uh, yes, I want to exit without saving. Um, one other thing that you can do um, just user experience wise that's very clever here is let's see if I go back to my Apple Street FG let's say for example I wanted to um, get a better feeling for where Apple Street laid out in comparison to another one of my um, alignments and profiles within my drawing um, Project Explorer has this nice little compare tool tool up here at the top so if I for example wanted to see how my, this particular alignment relates to the finished ground of Appleseed Lane. I could basically do that. So if I pick my alignment and then my profile, then that will, that um, compare to layout profile then shows up in this window as well. So it's a really clever way for you to kind of um, not have to go through the overhead of creating a, um, like a, a superimposed profile, sorry. That was escaping me for a moment. Um, so again, this is just a really quick way to do that. It works for things, everything from like surfaces to feature lines, um, all sorts of different things. And it lets you pick objects from the drawing as well. So a whole bunch of really good tools there. And again, there's like, uh, yeah, here's surfaces and then there are uh, feature lines in here as well. So anyway, so that is a very quick run through of the user interface. The next thing I wanted to walk through are things related to how you can get into some more productivity tools around editing things in the drawing, such as, um, let's talk about pipe networks next. Okay, so here we go with um, just editing some other objects here within uh, Project Explorer. Um, so first, let me just really quickly just kind of give myself a little bit more space over here so we can see what's going on. Um, some of the other things you can do here, let's say I have a couple of quarters in here, and again, um, very similar things you can do that you that I was just showing you in the um, alignment profile section, but this is clearly a quarter, so we want to look at this more in a section view. Um, so things that we have here, everything from you get a nice clear view of. In this case, it's the quarter, so I get my cross section of my quarter model here, um, just like it's quarter section editor in Civil 3D. I can step through my stations. I can um, do a search for um, all sorts of different stuff. I can do things like um, just kind of determining what types of point codes or link codes or shape codes I want to see and which ones I want um, kind of displayed in my thing as well. Um, once again, purple means I can edit it. Um, black means it's just kind of, it's read only, but there's a lot of different stuff I can do here. Um, again, I have my compare 
to tool up here as well. So if I wanted to see like how this related to um, my existing ground profile, I'm, I'm sorry, my existing ground surface, I can show my existing ground surface up here. Or if I have, again, feature lines or anything else that I want to be able to compare to, I can use this tool as well. Um, so let's get on to, I wanted to talk a bit about, in this case, just pipe networks. So there are a bunch of really cool productivity tools in um, Project Explorer that make life easier to edit pipe networks. So again, I've got in this drawing a couple different pipe networks that I'll just be kind of poking through a little bit. There's a sewer network one and there's a sewer network two. Um, again, picking different objects or different rows in these tables kind of highlights different stuff that I see in my preview. So this is again, just a nice live preview of what I'm looking at and it's all tied directly to my drawing. So again, I've got all these pipes laid out, no, not in that one, but yeah, in my profiles and everything, I've got my pipe layout all done in profile and everything. Um, but let's say I want to be able to compare really easily, like what my layout and profile is versus um, what my um, what my view and plan would be. So I'm just going to keep, just keep plan open over here. And again, it's, it's a lot nicer when um, this is over on a separate window and I can kind of expand it out and see a lot more data. Um, but hey, I'm in a demo here, so I'm kind of limited to the real estate on this one screen. So this is what we're gonna work with. Okay. So let's say for example, um, okay. Progressive um, disclosure, what we were talking about before. So just being able to only see stuff that you wanna work with. Um, very similar to like we talked about earlier, how I, I, it, selecting one thing gives me more information about like what's in it. Um, I can further reduce what I see um, in this whole window here. If like, for example, I wanted to, let's see if I had, this is struct, uh, let's go back to this one. And let's say I wanted to show um, not my entire network, but I only wanted to show um, struct between structures A2 and let's say A6. Okay, here we go. So up at the top here, you'll see a couple different things. Um, there is a way that you can not only show um, this particular pipe network goes in kind of a bit of a funky loop here. So if I like, for example, use my control key to see kind of where all my different structures are. Um, and then you can basically kind of, yeah, there's that one and it just kind of goes up and around, goes down this way and then it goes like kind of back up in the other way. So this one doesn't really like lay itself out in profile super well in this particular context. But what you can do is if I go up at the top here, this will let me show kind of how, which between which structure to another structure I want this particular um, thing to lay out as. So if I pick um, from structure, I'm in my, my network one, if I go from structure A2, not to my lift station, but if I go to, for example, A6, now I've got just um, those particular pipes um, showing in this particular view, which is quite handy. Um, some other things that you can show here, like if I right click on that view and go into preferences, um, there's a whole bunch of different things that you can toggle on and off. So things like that purple zone here is my max pipe cover zone. So if I, if I do or don't want to see that, then I can turn that on and off, um, change the color, my grid lines and all the other display components in there as well. So, or if I want to, for example, only show the currently selected pipe and not have the, um, the preview like kind of jump around, then I can do that as well. I'm just going to cancel that. So things you can do in here that um, just make your life a bit easier than it is using some of the standard civil 3D tools currently. Um, let's say for example, I have my, there's this whole thing has an, um, Project Explorer has the notion of a pipe run, which is quite handy. Um, so let's say for example, I wanna edit a pipe run. So let's say I have those particular pipes selected. So you'll see here, this is only from A2 to A6. So A1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, 
that doesn't seem right. A two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. There you go. Okay. So let's say, for example, I want to edit the slope across these for just a to so that they have just a nice single consistent slope instead of um, different slopes. Um, I have a whole bunch of different options here that I can use. Everything from just kind of whether I want to hold the beginning or the end of the pipe run elevation and which of those, um, which elevation parameter I want to hold as part of that calculation. So in this case here, I want to hold my end run. I want to hold this part right here. And let's say I want to um, hold by invert or make my adjustment by invert and set and adjust it by invert. And then let's say I want to just kind of have a nice consistent negative one slope like across the board here. Um, bunch of different other calculations I could do if I wanted to just make a, a cross the board elevation change or do a rise over run, that kind of thing, I can do that. But again, um, this pipe run editor is only using the, um, the pipes that are showing in this particular view here. So in this case, you'll see here, um, I had A2 to A6. So that's showing A2 to A6. If I didn't have this picked here, then it would show me all my pipes um, and they would all be using this, this whole thing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to say, okay. And then once it goes through and blasts that whole calculation through there, you'll see now I have my nice consistent negative one, um, slope across all those. And then if I, for example, change this view now, well, actually I can just kind of show you in this whole pipe run editor or this whole pipe view down here that I've got all those slopes that I changed between those pipes are all at one. And then any, anything that I didn't touch was just, um, just maintain the existing slope that it had. So, um, really clever way to control some things across, um, multiple parts in a pipe network. We'll talk about doing some other changes across different objects, um, in the next part here, which is going to be talking about, um, reports and AutoCAD tables, among other things. And this, there's a lot you can get into here. Um, I'm just gonna give a super high level overview of some of the things that you can do as far as custom tables and reports here. Um, so where all the magic for that is gonna take place is on this last tab all the way down to uh, far right here. So all the way down here, we've got feature lines, we've got AutoCAD blocks you can do stuff with, as well as this last tab here is, um, it's called object sets. And so in Project Explorer, an object set is, as the name implies, it's a set of objects in which you can do different operations on. Um, it could be a set of objects, like for example, an alignment and a series of Kogo points that you wanna be able to run a, like a station offset table to be able to see kind of where um, the station offset of the Kogo points that you wanna see in a report or in a tabular format could be. Um, so it's, it could be comparing objects like that, different types of objects, or it could be something as simple as we're going to walk through here, which is just going to be um, just extracting data from one particular object, such as a pipe network or a feature line to um, run a report or make a table. So let's, a couple things I'm going to show you here. So same kind of thing. You'll see the theme throughout Project Explorer of um, top table is the master item, and then a breaks down into sub items from there into these lower tables. And so the first thing I wanna show you here, this top table is um, a couple of object sets that I have set up that are gonna run different actions. Um, in this case here, let's let's start with the, the one at the bottom here, which is a, um, this is gonna be a report that will run a stakeout report for a feature line. Um, let's say for example, like if I, I'm going to pan over here just to, so I can kind of show you what the story is. So over here, I've got this, um, I lost my mouse for a second there. Um, I have a feature line here, two feature lines actually, one that's the top of a proposed retaining wall and one that's the bottom of a proposed retaining wall. And so again, um, Project Explorer, if I don't know what's what, I can really easily say, here's PI, I want to be able to see what that is, where it is in plan. I can hold my control key down and I can see kind of what everything is and um, just gives me a nice handy view of kind of what it is that I'm looking at. So what I'm going to be doing here is um, there is 
basically what I can do, like if I wanted to run a report, I'll just give you a quick overview and then I will kind of walk you through some of the examples that I already have set up here. So let's say if I had a new report that I wanted to create altogether, I basically say new object set. And this is um, basically just going to give you another dialog box that'll let you do just a whole bunch of different things. So everything from being able to name the object set, whatever you want it to do, what that object set is going to be like um, a brief description of it. So let's say let's just, this is just going to be um, feature line report. Um, there are a couple different things you can do here. So um, next thing you need after an action is what do you want this object set to do? When I drop down this list here, you're going to see a whole bunch of different actions that you can take. Everything from um, generating a report in a bunch of different formats here, from everything from text to CSV, HTML, all the way down the line, um, to doing things such as exporting the object set to a 2D AutoCAD drawing, very handy to do as well, um, to things like dumping out the data into an AutoCAD table, either in your model space or your paper space. So a whole bunch of different things you can do there. And then once I do things like, for example, if I pick that I want to be able to do a like an external report, then I'm presented with information as to kind of what I want to do with, with, with that report afterwards. So what do I want to name it? Where do I want that report saved to? Um, styles I'll get into in just a moment and all sorts of other stuff. If I get into, say, an AutoCAD table, if I want to create this object set as an AutoCAD table, if I pick that, it'll give me a different tab that'll tell me where I want to put that table in um, either model space or paper space, um, different style of table that I want to use and a summary and all that kind of good stuff. So lots of different stuff that you can do here. So in order to show you just kind of a quick view of what I some examples of this, I'm just going to cancel this and I'm actually going to open up, let's use this um, stakeout report that I have saved here already. So this one, I just double clicked on it. Same dialog box. Everything's all set up for me already for this case. Um, this is going to create a report for my top of wall feature line. And it's going to say, it's going to put it out as an HTM file. Um, I have already created a layout style for this particular report. And so um, I can either use exactly the same layout that I have shown in Project Explorer right here, or if I want to be, if I want to customize it a bit, I can um, edit that style. And very similar to the way that the layout uh, interface in the Master Project Explorer window was used, I have that same kind of interaction um, here. So if I have, in this case, this is just a feature line. So if I go to my feature line um, report layout, I have all sorts of different things that I can do to kind of show how I want my data represented in this particular feature line layout style. Um, I can pick and choose which parameters I want to use. If I want to change the name of any of these purple parameters, I can do so. Um, and likewise, if it was a feature line report comparing it to a parcel or a series of parcels that I can set like my layout for the feature line information, and also my parcel information. So very handy stuff going on there. Likewise, um, I can save these layouts and place them on another location where either I can use these uh, the same layout later on down the road, or if I want to share it out with my organization, I can do that as well. So in this case, I'm just going to say cancel. Um, I've already said that I already know what kind of um, style and everything I have. So this is the layout style. There's a report style that I could use if I wanted to. Um, same thing, if I have a report style that um, I would like to specify, I can do the exact same thing that I was doing and just kind of show just what type of, um, how I want the report structured as far as just kind of the display of the, um, the different objects within the report. So things like text, um, all that kind of good stuff. So I can do that. And then let's say, I'm just gonna just accept that as it is. And then let's, how do you actually get the output of this report? So a couple different things you have to do. First, you have to tell it which objects you want to run this particular object set on. Um, very simple to do that. You can do things such as um, when you select it. Um, again, 
this table, the next table down will show you kind of the sub object level of that. So in this case, I have the top of wall feature line included with this object set. If I wanted to include, or if I wanted to remove this top of wall from it and use this for something else, I can do that. But in this case, I want to say my top of wall feature line report, I want to run on my top of wall feature line. So I'm going to go into my feature lines and say top of wall. I can have the same report run on multiple different objects as well. So if I wanted just a generic wall feature line report, I could run it both on both of these objects at the same time. So, so once I do that, I can just select it and I can, I have a couple different action buttons up here at the top. I can either run just the selected action or if I have a whole series of object set actions here, I can run them all at once. Um, in this case, just for the sake of this demo, I'm just gonna run the selected action and it'll ask me, hey, it's done. Do I wanna open the file now? And I can say, yes, I do, because I wanna show it to you folks. So now if I drag this over from my other screen, you'll see here I have just this nice layout report of um, my feature line. So this is the feature line report, gives me a nice kind of stakeout report of um, where all my elevations, my northings, eastings are, and all that kind of stuff, and all my grades for that um, top wall feature line. So very clever. Other things you can do. So now let's get into um, similar things that you can do, very similar ways that you can structure. Um, let's say, let's do an AutoCAD table. Um, very similar thing that we have that I was just walking through um, for the feature line report that I just showed you. Um, but this case, let's say I'm running a, let's say it's a, it's a, it's a report on my storm sewers, this network two. And again, which one is it? I can pick and choose and see like, okay, which uh, pipes are going to be running in this particular report. I think it's actually over there. So if I pan, uh, it should be able to show me. Whoops. It's in there somewhere. Anyway, so basically, so at this point, if I wanted to say, let's see what this particular pipe report is going to do for this pipe table rather. I'm going to double click on it just to see what it is that's happening here. Um, again, this one is set as you can see in the action column up here from that previous table. This is going to export this table to my model space. And I had already specified earlier um, where I wanted this particular table to be placed in my drawing. So um, I already have that set up and I also have this set to be dynamic. So um, I can have it when it's creating an AutoCAD table, I can have this be set to either um, every time I update a parameter within the object, within the object set, it'll automatically update that table. Or if I don't want that, um, that noise happening in my drawing, I can only do that. I can have it set to manually. So it'll only do it when I rerun the object set action as I go. Um, same thing uses the exact same style format that we were looking at at the report as well as you can have specific table styles that you have set as well so like if for example i have my table style here um, i can use styles that are already set up i can select all of my different background colors headers all that kind of good stuff all my colors and everything for my autocad table so very handy there um, just for the sake of this particular demo, I'm just going to say, okay, um, needs a table style, of course. So I'm just going to just say, just use the default just for the sake of argument here. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to kind of just show you that there's nothing, there's no table in here yet, but when I actually run this action, now if I just move this out of the way, and if I zoom out a bit, just if I can remember where it is I placed it, right down there. Okay. So here is my AutoCAD table that I created using um, Project Explorer. And again, it's not a civil 3D table, it's, it's an AutoCAD table. So you can modify it as you want to and everything. You've got all your padding and all that kind of good stuff that you're used to, that you wanted to have in an AutoCAD table. Um, Things that you can do here, again, this is this is a dynamic table. So um, you can, like once again, Project Explorer is tied tightly to 
um, all the data within the civil 3D drawing. So like if, for example, I wanted to, let's say, where was I here? So I'm on my pipes and everything. This is storm network, this is sewer network too, I'm sorry. So if in here I wanted to say, I'm picking my sewer network two, and let's say I wanted to pick, let's say I want pipes 21 through 23, let's say, to be a different size. So what I can do is if I, oh, that's not what I wanna do. I don't even have to do that. So basically, very similar to what you do in Civil 3D, um, if I have things selected in Civil 3D, right click is your friend. So if I right click, I get a whole bunch of different options here of different things that I can do with these selected objects. Um, and in this case here, I want to, um, very popular um, suggestion from our customers was to be able to swap parts, multiple parts of a gravity network in one shot. So Project Explorer lets you do that. So let's say like if, for example, I wanted these now to be 18 inch PVC instead of 12 inch PVC, you'll see in a couple seconds here um, over on my table, once I click OK, those pipes regenerate. And then now those selected pipes, um, they were all updated to um, 18 inch and now um, they are good to go. Um, so a lot of different productivity tools like that that you can do within um, Project Explorer as far as the, um, not only just the reports and tables, but also just being able to um, just select different objects and run different things across them, setting our reference surfaces, stuff like that. Um, other thing I forgot to mention earlier in this whole presentation was the fact that um, up in the upper left-hand corner here in many of the object types, you'll be able to see that you can do things even creating certain types of objects from within uh, Project Explorer as well. So not, um, you don't necessarily have to um, interact with the ribbon or the prospector in order to do a lot of your creation and editing workflows. You can just do it all directly from within Project Explorer. All right, so finally, um, covered a lot of territory here and there's a lot more that we could cover, but um, I only have about 45 minutes. So um, last thing I wanna to touch on really quickly is just the fact that this is release one of Project Explorer for Civil 3D. Um, there's a lot of stuff that we wanna be able to do to make enhancements to Project Explorer as time goes on. Um, some things in the near term, some things in the long term. Um, Particularly some things that you'll see in the nearer term that we are focused on right now are things such as I mentioned at the beginning, opening up Project Explorer to support more Civil 3D objects. So um, we're looking at like you'll see things such as pressure networks and catchments and some other things are not represented here on um, Project Explorer up in the top tab here. We're working on making some of those changes right now and uh, look forward to those in the near future. A lot of other things we're looking at doing are things such as um, making the tables and reports even more flexible than they are today. So being able to do things such as um, like make the tables a bit more flexible so that you can merge columns, column headers, do calculations perhaps in the columns, um, add your own custom rows and stuff like that. So just, we know that this is just a tables and tables are production deliverables, reports are production deliverables, you get paid for those and you have very specific requirements depending on where you are. And so we wanna make um, the tables and reports a lot more flexible so that you can get exactly what you need out of them. Um, and plenty of other things that we're looking at doing as well, things like just being able to open it up so you can edit even more parameters within um, Project Explorer. So being able to like anything that's black, that's read only, over time we'd like to make as many of those um, editable as humanly possible. So we have a lot of work to do on Project Explorer, but we're really excited about where we are with it, at least um, with our first release of it. So hope you are as well, and definitely looking forward to hearing your feedback on it as you get into it. So. Um, thanks for your time, and I'm really looking forward to your questions and feedback. Thanks.